Hi everyone. Today we're going to cover dynamic chemical equilibrium. Here's a page on the learning objective from College Board. If you'd like to read more about it, please pause the video and read it for yourself. Chemical equilibrium. It occurs in an enclosed system. It is a reversible reaction where you have forward and reverse reactions going on at the same time. And the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate. There's, on the molecular level, there's a dynamic change. However, on the macroscopic level, what we can observe, you wouldn't be able to see any changes regarding concentration, partial pressure, colors. They tend to remain constant. So some examples of reversible reactions regarding physical changes such as evaporation and condensation, dissolving and precipitation. Chemical reactions such as acid-base reaction and redox reactions. Then in the biological system, the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin and in the environment, the carbon cycle. We'd like to look at uh, the evaporation and condensation of um, some water molecules. Here's a diagram. Uh, we have a container of some water molecules in an enclosed system. Uh, the water molecules on the surface that have greater kinetic energy and greater than the activation energy, they will evaporate and escape into uh, the gas space to form vapor above the liquid. Now, as you form more and more water vapor above the liquid, they, due to the intermolecular force of attraction, these molecules will then condense back into liquid. So now we have uh, constant exchanges between the liquid and the gaseous phase. Evaporation and condensation both are taking place. And when they reach the same rate, then we have a dynamic equilibrium. And then when we look at the surface of the water liquid, it tends to stay the same as if no change is happening, yet on a molecular level, there's a dynamic change. And the vapor pressure at that particular temperature is constant. In our body system, in our red blood cells, we have hemoglobin, that when the blood flows through the lungs, the hemoglobin will bind the oxygen when the surrounding concentration is high and driving the reaction to the right. When blood flows out of our lungs, the hemoglobin will release the oxygen because surrounding concentration is low and the reaction is driven to the left. Now this is explained by La Chatelet's principle which will be further explained in uh, following videos. Let's look at the equilibrium between N2O4 and NO2. Here's a diagram showing them at different times. Now as you know, N2O4 is colorless and is converted into the brownish gas NO2 from one mole into two moles. So we start with initially, uh, if you look at diagram A, there are eight molecules of N2O4 and no NO2. Now as it changes, one mole of N2O4 is converted into two moles of NO2. Now we come to a seven versus two molecules as depicted by diagram B. Now as time goes on, another one molecule of N2O4 is converted into two molecules of NO2. Now we have um, 6 N2O4 versus 4 NO2 as depicted by diagram C. Now this will go on for some time until we constantly get 6 and 4 distribution. This is depicted in diagram D. When the concentration doesn't change anymore, we know that equilibrium is reached. Here are two very important diagrams for us to learn. Uh, looking at the left-hand side diagram where you have concentration versus time. So we start off with high concentration of N2O4 and no concentration of NO2. As time goes on, N2O4 will be converted into NO2. So the concentration of N2O4 will decrease while the concentration of NO2 will increase as the product. Eventually, after some time, the concentration will stay constant and we say equilibrium has been reached. If you look at the right-hand side diagram, it is rate versus time. Uh, the forward rate is represented by the blue line, which is forward rate constant Kf times the concentration of N2O4. 
Initially, we have lots of NO2, so that will be converted into NO2, and that um, will decrease the forward rate. Now, as more NO2 is made, then the um, reverse rate will pick up. Eventually, they come to the same rate, and equilibrium is reached. So if we look at um, um, the following explanation. Uh, when forward rate is equal to the reverse rate, represented by Kf times N2O4 concentration equal to Kr times NO2 concentration. And if we rearrange the terms, we have a ratio between forward rate constant and reverse rate constant, and a ratio between product concentration over reactant concentration. We arrive at the equilibrium constant, K. The law of mass action is really a relationship between balanced equation and the expression of equilibrium constant. Now here we have A moles of A and B moles of B reactant to convert into C moles of C and D moles of D. So when we write the equilibrium constant is equal to product concentration over reactant concentration raised to a respective exponent based on the mole coefficient. So basically, Equilibrium constant is the ratio between product and reactant concentrations. Uh, we need to realize that equilibrium constant is constant. It depends on temperature. So if temperature does not change, K remains the same. However, if temperature changes, K value will change. Here's practice problem number one. Now Kc meaning equilibrium constant expression in terms of concentration. Let's learn how to write Kc expression for the combustion of propane. Now when we write it, we put the carbon dioxide product concentration in the numerator raised to the power of 3 because it has the coefficient of 3 times uh, water vapor concentration raised to the power of 4 over propane concentration and over oxygen concentration raised to the power of 5. All these exponents come from the mole ratios or mole coefficients. There's another way to write equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure, we call it Kp, such as in the Haber process, the making of ammonia. Now Kp is equal to the partial pressure of ammonia raised to the power of 2 over the partial pressure of nitrogen and over the partial pressure of hydrogen raised to the power of 3. One thing I'd like to point out is that when we write concentration, we use bracket to represent concentration of. And when we talk about partial pressure, we use parentheses. Please note the differences. The relationship between Kc and Kp. Now again, going back to the Haber process, we write Kc expression. In the ideal gas law, Pv is equal to nRt, so we can rearrange the terms to write concentration of something as mole per volume, n over v, or we can say it's pressure over rt. Now we can substitute all these uh, uh, P over RT terms into the concentration term in the Kc expression. And then we're going to group all the partial pressures together and the RT terms together. So we now have Kc is actually equal to Kp times RT uh, to the power of 4 minus 2 for this particular reaction. Now we can then express Kp in terms of Kc, which is Kp is equal to Kc times Rt delta n, delta n representing the moles of product minus the moles of reactant from your balanced equation. And R is the ideal gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Practice problem number two. For the reaction, two moles of sulfur trioxide decomposed to form two moles of sulfur dioxide and oxygen. At 1000 K Kelvin, Kc is equal to 4.07 times 10 to the minus 3. Let's calculate Kp. Now, using the equation, we can plug in uh, the Kc value and the R value and the temperature value. Notice that the delta N is 3 moles of product minus 2 moles of reactant. So now we calculate it to be 0.334. In a heterogeneous system, we have solid and liquid. The concentration of solid does not change because they do not expand to fill the container, unlike gases. And the concentration of pure liquid is defined by the density, which is constant. 
Therefore, the concentration of pure solid and liquids are not included in equilibrium constant expression. Now, looking at this particular equation, iron oxide and carbon monoxide to form iron and carbon dioxide. The equilibrium constant in terms of concentration is expressed as CO2 concentration raised to the power of 3 over concentration of carbon monoxide raised to the power of 3 and iron and iron 3 oxide are not included in the expression. Summarizing what we have learned today, we learned the conditions of dynamic equilibrium. We learned the molecular representations and diagrammatic representation of equilibrium. We learned how to write K in terms of a mathematical expression and also the final relationship between KC and KP. From the team of MLCA, we would like to thank you for watching the above video and we hope to see you again next time.